And a very good evening to you. This is Easy Friday. My name is Shiksha Aurora. Welcome to KBC Channel 1. And of course, I'll be giving you the news of the day right here. Remember, you can always interact with us. The hashtag is Easy Friday at Shiksha Aurora at KBC Channel 1. Right, what do we have lined up for you? Well, I'm going to be giving you the latest in terms of politics. Of course, there's a lot that's going on. President Uhuru Kenyatta says the government has actually upscaled the absorption of the NYS service that's men and women into the discipline areas and of course there's a lot that that's happening in terms of what Martha Karua has also you know been really going at it in terms of the campaigning and she says that Kenyans should really go against electing leaders who've got a questionable integrity and their past as well. So that's something that we'll be talking about later on in the spotlight. I'll be speaking to Lenana Kariba about his journey in the industry as an actor. So that's coming up later on. Remember, business, sports as well. But for now, let's take a look at the highlights. This meteoric rise in the number of recruits joining NYS coupled also with the enhanced standards of training that have been introduced, have been critical in safeguarding the social economic interests of Kenya. President Uhuru Kenyatta lords the National Youth Service for placement of more men and women into both private and public agencies. Deputy President William Ruto pledges to make two-thirds gender rule a reality should Kenya Kwanzaa win the elections. People who keep on saying that I'm planning to hack, I don't know, I have teams, but all that is uh, politics. It's not uh, reality. And Information CS Joe Mushero dismisses claims that the government plans to interfere with election results transmission. All right, welcome back. This is Easy Friday. Remember, you can always interact with us. The hashtag is Easy Friday. Our sign language interpreter is Anne Wangeshi. Now, the top story tonight, President Uhuru Kenyatta says the government has upscaled the absorption of National Youth Service men and women into the discipline services and other private and public agencies. The head of state also hailed the newly revamped leadership of NYS, which he said was transforming the service and the lives of thousands of recruits. Take a look. Speaking during the pass out parade that was held at NYS Gilgil campus in Nakuru County, the head of state said various state agencies had absorbed thousands of NYS recruits. That with the support of the ministry and the reorganization that has taken place, we are now able to have a stewardship of senior management of NYS who have achieved a most remarkable turnaround, Hongera. He added that the rise in recruitment at NYS had safeguarded the socio-economic interest of the nation. This meteoric rise in the number of recruits joining NYS, coupled also with the enhanced standards of training that have been introduced have been critical in safeguarding the social economic interests of Kenya and our youth as contained in our development blueprints. It has in addition expanded opportunities for thousands of young people, most of whom would not have had the resources to acquire the skills and training offered by NYS. <laughs> In a fun-filled event characterized by majestic marching, intricate drills, and colorful shows from the service recruits, President Kenyatta commended the reorganization of the service, saying it would offer thousands of youths with quality training and life skills. The administration has secured 2,649 job placements for NYS graduates, and of these, KDF and the National Police Service have recruited 500 each. Kenya Prisons has absorbed 61, while the Kenya Airports Authority has concluded interviews for 200 whom they intend to employ. This does not include the 700 
who have already been employed by NYS itself. Tena hiyo hongera. Asante sana. Gender Cabinet Secretary Margaret Kobia said youths are now accessing high quality training which is a game changer in addressing job scarcity. Your Excellency, your presence with us is a true demonstration that your continued determination and to ensuring that youth of this country access quality training and discipline for the labor market and to support the national development. Your Excellency, I wish to thank the National Youth Service Council and the management for strengthening National Youth Service governance to deliver on the now expanded mandate. 9,464 recruits graduated after a six-month paramilitary training course where those who had attained outstanding performances were fitted by the head of state. For Easy Friday, I'm Ben Troyenjua. Now moving on, Deputy President William Ruto has pledged to make two-thirds gender rule a reality should Kenya Kwanzaa form a government after the 9th of August elections. Now Ruto, who spoke during Kenya Kwanzaa Women Charter Conference at Nyayo Stadium, said women will be at the decision-making table under his tenure. Deputy President William Ruto now says Kenya Kwanzaa administration will within three months of ascending to power if elected into office roll out mechanisms to ensure two thirds gender rule comes to fruition. I, William Samoe Ruto, on behalf of Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, do hereby commit to actualize the two third gender principle. Ruto, who spoke at Kenya Kwanzaa Women Conference at Nyayo Stadium in Nairobi, claimed his government will be a game changer in the country's system of governance as women will be at the center stage of the decision-making table. Women will become equal partners, will have equal say, will occupy equal positions in the highest decision-making organ of the Republic of Kenya. Ruto, who exuded confidence that Kenya Kwanzaa will have majority of elected women, claimed his government will focus on uplifting women across the country and ensure half of cabinet appointments are women. That we shall allocate 50% of all cabinet positions to the women of Kenya. At the same time, the DP took a swipe at rogue public servants involved in the illegal transfers of lands and property to disinherit Kenyans, promising to have a law formulated to criminalize the vice. Full enforcement of the spousal consent provisions of the law in all land transactions and property rights to cushion women children and families from dispossession of family land. This as Kenya Kwanzaa women leader call upon women in the country to elect Kenya Kwanzaa leaders in the upcoming poll. Sisi wanawake wataifa la Kenya tunakuahidi kutembea na wewe tunakuahidi kufanya kampeni zako tunakuahidi kukupigia kura kwa sababu tumeona ukombozi we are almost there. It's only two months to the election. And there are very many people out there campaigning. But I want us to add the voice of women. Kwa sababu wanawake ndiyo wameshikilia serikali na ndiyo wanachagwana zaidi. Mtakubali kufanya hiyo kazi? Will you go door to door? During the event that culminated into charter signing, Detailing policy interventions, Ruto further pledged to establish 50 billion shillings hustlers fund to boost small and medium enterprises without interest. For Easy Friday, I'm Gladys Mungai.
And still in politics, Azimio La Umoja presidential running mate Martha Karua has cautioned Kenyans against electing leaders with questionable integrity in the forthcoming general election. Addressing a series of rallies in Kitui, Karua said such leaders cannot be entrusted with Kenya's top leadership. <laughs> Azimio La Umoja won Kenya on Friday took their coalition's campaigns to the Ukambani counties of Makweni and Kitui. The Azimio Brigade, led by the coalition party's running mate Martha Karua, addressed rallies at Kamutei Market in Kitui South, Zombe and Mutitu centers in Kitui East before concluding the day-long vote-hand tour of Kitui and Makweni at Kwavonze Trading Center in Kitui Rural. Karua calling on Kenyans to elect a president who has respect and the nation at heart. Karua father said the Azimio administration, led by Raila Odinga, will be founded on the rule of law and zero tolerance on corruption. Corruption is on the ballot. Tuambio Kenya, wakapenda kuamua, uamwe ni nani ufisadi na ni nani atashinda vita thidi ya ufisadi. Hakuna karata, hawa ni watu wakukomboa Kenya mahali mebakia watu wa ugatuzi na tunataka haki kwa wote ile matha mezema wote social justice tunataka uchumi kwa wote ni lazima vijana wetu wapate kazi na tukiwa kwa serikali tutakuwa tukipata haki yetu kama community zile zikini ndika tumesema mwaka huwa tuwaki nyuma tangia sasa na hata melele Alia Karua attended the ordination ceremony of ABC Church Bishop Dr. Meshak Mukwilu at the Makweni region head. Mubila good leadership, uongozi bora. Hii kanisa halinge kuwa mahali hiko, ata kuzambaratika inge zambaratika. Sasa muko, mumenenepa, mungu wa memuonekania na munaendelea. Inchi ni vile vile. Moving on information, Cabinet Secretary Joe Mushiru has termed as baseless and political gimmick claims that the government was planning to interfere with election results transmission. Mushiru affirmed that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission servers are very secure, adding that it was impractical to interfere with the transmission process as alleged. And the private sector. In the last couple of weeks, a section of political leaders has alleged a plot to hack the IEBC servers and transmission of the results. In reacting to this, Mshero says that the electoral body is an independent body which has hired ICT experts to make sure that the transmission of the results is safe. All that is uh, politics. It's not uh, reality. I was talking to professionals, people who know how systems are set up, people who've been looking at security, and we know as a country we've been fairly secure. So this issue of hacking is just a political gimmick. It's not uh, reality. The CS says that the government has strong IT infrastructure and trained personnel to deal with any planned cases of hacking. We have the right infrastructure, fiber, across the country. We've put in uh, new data centers and, of course, the training. On internet connectivity, the ICTCS says that IEBC has acquired over 1,000 satellite modems to make sure that all polling stations without internet were fully covered during the elections. They also say they have got, they're calling them satellite modems. They've got over 1,500 satellite modems, which means they're going to use those. So Marjan announced that as the CEO of uh, IBC that they also have those devices which can work anywhere, which means they have 100% coverage of uh, all the polling stations to be able to transmit. He was, however, quick to add that hackers had on many occasions tried to hack government websites and succeeded in a few, but this has been addressed. Speaking in Naivasha after closing a workshop on national cyber security strategy, Msheru at the same time termed cybercrime as one of the major challenges facing the world. Irene Mchuma Odim is a Friday.
All right, and with that, it's time for us to take our first commercial break, but we will be back in just a moment. Don't go too far. This is Easy Friday. of the Kalashi International Film and TV Market. We have an exciting array of conferences and workshops featuring film industry experts from across the world. Come and experience the best of Kenya storytelling at the Kalasha Market 2022. Come connect and trade in Nairobi. Come and experience three days of film and TV exhibition by uh, uh, players with, from within Kenya and of course the African continent. Welcome to the Kalasha Market. Kupata alazima nishike kama skiza tuni yako. Bonyeza star 811 star Nine six two hash. Last man ni jiga mapema. Sisi ba jiga hizi ba mapema mataga asiriga. Ora chovu mi ni jiga mutoa marathon na kwa nengo na experience kapsa nengo na experience. If you don't hurry, you will not break the record. Okay, kwa chini jiga hizi mu. Kupata lazima ni shike. Bonyeza star eight one one star nine six two hash. Star eight one one star nine six two hash. Amekujoko? Kwani yako amekwambia? Hapana. Ah. Fadhana kama chanda kupigia. Chunga sana usibomoe boma ya mwanzako. Afiki kwa na mtu anamuongelesha. Lazima ikuwe wewe. Na ukiendelea hivi utazeeka ukiwa mwanamke mwenye machungu sana. Wow. Na hata kama pesa yangu ya kwanza ilipotea, Mungu akunisahau. Alinipatia ingine. Mama Jen, are you insecure? Christine, hiyo kiburi yako itaisha tu. Pete, why is your sister here? The world does not revolve around you. Well, actually, let me go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sasa hivi ndio realize unafaa kwa workout on some things. Hapa natoka school pitch ataniambia nitoke. Umesikia? Welcome back. Now, Kenya is among the 12 English-speaking African countries to draft the Infrastructure Maintenance Guidebook for Prisons and Correctional Facilities. The guidebook will help correctional facilities to upgrade their infrastructures, among them digitization. Now, speaking during the closing ceremony of a four-day workshop that brought together 12 African countries, Commissioner General of Kenya Prison Service, Brigadier Retired John K. Warioba said the government has committed to ensure prisons are safe by increasing budgetary allocations to the service. In a landmark event that marks the beginning of ultramodernism, Kenya has underscored the need to improve infrastructure and prison facilities in accordance to international standards. If you have had a chance to visit our prisons, you will realize that we are doing a lot of improvements to make them more comfortable to our prisoners. Of course, when they come in, they come in to be punished for the offenses that they, they commit, but we also rehabilitate them. So we want to make life comfortable for them such that they can go through the, the rehabilitation process that uh, we are taking them through. Meeting participants from the African continent deliberated on making African prisons a state of their art corrective facilities to address the challenges that have existed since pre-colonial era. We'll be able to have a better reformation program with the view that when they are discharged from the prisons, they will be appropriately equipped with employable skills. So when they go out, they will be able to find jobs for themselves and they will not go and commit any other offense. Terry Hackett, head of Unit International Committee of the Red Cross Geneva, lauded the holistic approach on designing prisons infrastructures 
to bring peace to the society. I would encourage people to look within to find these solutions because taking it from other contexts around the world, there's there's a different environment, uh, different uh, uh, impacts, different economic situations, um, and quite frankly, different legal regimes as well. So what comes from within the countries and from within the continent, um, but again, focus on the Nelson Mandela rules uh, is the key piece. The corrective documented framework is in line with the late Nelson Mandela rules on prisons and prisoners. The next workshop will be for French-speaking countries in Abidjan, Ivory Coast in September 2022. Ruth Huamboy for Easy Friday. Now, Nekesa or Wekesa? Wanyoni or Naliaka. The naming of babies among the Abaluya community is influenced by various factors, especially seasons of the year. This is our focus tonight on My Culture. Take a look. The Abaluya of Kenya have systematic ways of naming children. The Luya ethnic group consists of at least 16 dialect-speaking subgroups. These include Abakayo, Bukusu, Abanyala, Abanyore, Abatoto, Abetako, Abesuka, Abakabras, Abakisa, Abalogoli, Abamarachi, Abasamia, Abatachoni, Abateriki, and Abawanga. Peana Machina in Ajurikana. Hii ni machina ya watu fulani na area fulani. Kama huku luluja land, tuko na watu, wanyala, wapukusu, wa marakori, watukani, wako na machina ya kuwana. Lakini sisi kama waisuha, tuko na machina kama shoko njera, wangwa, muanda, imbula, vitu kama hiyo. Some children are named based on particular seasons such as harvesting, planting, weeding, drought, rainy, hunger, plowing, sunset, among others. Makina zetu tutukua tunapeana kulingana na ukoo yenu, kitu cha kwanza tunapeana na musimu, kitu cha pili, ya tatu tunapeana kulingana na machira. Inini kimetokea, ndiyo mtota kasaliwa. The harvesting season is referred to as mulikesa. The male name is differentiated from the female version with the initial sound. The male name begins with the letter W as the female starts with the letter N from which the names Wekesa and Nekesa are derived. Other Luya sub-tribes name their children based on the rainy season with the name of Fula for the male child and Nafula for the girl child. Rain is regarded as a blessing and assurance of abundance of food among the Abaluya people. Some Luya sub-tribes name their children based on weeding season, hence the male name Wanyonyi and Naliaka for the female. Other children are named in line with drought, with Simiu being the name for the male child, while the female child is Nasimiu. However, the Batsoto sub-tribe has a different name, Kubaso, meaning sunny season. Some children are named based on the season of hunger, the name Wanjala or Wanzala for the male child and Anzala or Wanjala for the female child. Others are named during plowing season with the name Nalima for the girl child. Nalima is derived from the word kolema, which means plowing or digging. Some children are given names based on the hour of the day they are born. For instance, the name Nabuire for the girl child and Wabuire for the boy child, indicating the child was born at sunset. While some children are also named after their dead relatives, they believe that the dead remain alive in the born children. At the same time, a few of the Luya sub-tribes name their children based on planting season. The name for the male child born during planting season is Nyarotso and the girl child is named Nakomicha. Other factors that determine ways in which children are named include naming after a role model, celebrities or a famous person, traits of family members, added nicknames because of age sets, but insist on giving them a cultural name to identify the child with the family. Each surname is carefully chosen and bears a strong meaning for the family. We have MPs, 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 we have M
Kuna watoto wanaitwa Hamasi, kuna watoto wanaitwa Lubembe, kuna watoto wanaitwa Sets Lukonzo, fans wa mpira. Anasaa mtoto anaona yule anashapikia kwa timu fulani ya Manchester ama Arsenal. Anaita mtoto huyu anaitwa Runi, huyu anaitwa fulani, huyu anaitwa fulani. Na hiyo ndio tunasema imeanza kupotesa culture yetu. Lakini ikiwezekana hata ukiita anaitwa Runi anaitwa Ronaldo we muite hiyo china ya kisungu moja lakini yenu ya kiuko ni lazima in some cases the children are named during hair shaving ceremony and if a child does not belong to the family it is expected they will not survive if a child is born out of wedlock naming is done during shaving and elders include the aunts who are the ones who choose the name blasi maureta reporti wa mtoto ataletwa kunyolewa tuchipange tuanze kueleza vile atanyolewa na tuko na kulingana na mila tuko na yale tunafanya officially mtoto kunyolewa tuwezi tukanyoa tu mtoto leo asubuhi tunanyoa tunanyoa mtoto leo asubuhi hapana tunanyoa mtoto kwa staili yake tunachukua wamama wale watakuja kumnyoa na tena china inatengwa msendi ana propose reporting for my culture I'm Jackie Wambiru. Pesa zimeingia. Congratulations Sam. Gari ni lako sasa. Shukran. Oi boss, Sunia Chai insurance yako nitumie kabla nijipange. Wa! Insurance ya gari haiwezi kuwa transferred kwa mtu mwingine. Sina habari na nikuulize. Hii comprehensive insurance ina cover vitu gani? Comprehensive moto insurance ina cover gari linapoharibika wakati wa ajali pamoja na uharibifu wa mali ya mtu mwingine. Gari likibiwa au likichomeka pia ina cover passenger wa gari lako na passenger wa lile gari lingine kuna potokea ajali. Ha? Oh, Wani umenisahau mimi kama driver? Dereva hakui cover na comprehensive insurance ila anajitafutia personal accident cover. Hmm, umenichanua. Rose, yes. Hata nishughulikie hiyo insurance nitakujia gari kesho. Okay, sawa. <laughs> All right, let's cross over to Betty, who <laughs> has already right, taken away with the business news. Betty, what's happening? I know it's been a pretty busy week in terms of business. Maybe you can give us a breakdown on what to expect. Well, a lot is happening, Shiksha. I mean, um, the e-commerce market in Kenya is growing quite well, but there are quite some challenges, including... Have you ever tried to find um, an address of some place and you just can't find it? Nope. Well, Kenya's address system is a mess, so um, the e-commerce sector is struggling to grow. And that is our first story this evening on business. Kenya's e-commerce market remains low due to high delivery costs and a lack of clear national addressing system. The Ministry of Trade says these challenges are being addressed through the digital economy blueprint launched two years ago. Chief Administrative Secretary David Osiani says the address problem is being dealt with through the national addressing policy and the draft national addressing bill 2020. 2021 currently before parliament Kenya is the 54th largest e-commerce market in the world with revenue of approximately 200 billion shillings registered in 2021. United Nations Trade Agency ANCTAD ranks Kenya as the fourth biggest e-commerce market in Africa, behind Mauritius, South Africa and Nigeria. However, the growth of the sector is being choked by a lack of proper supporting infrastructure, with less than 6 million Kenyans buying and selling their goods using various online sites. Trade Chief Administrative Secretary David Osiani is urging small and medium enterprises to leverage on technology to boost the growth of e-commerce in the country. To encourage the private sector to identify the gaps in digital skills and develop programs to help in bridging the gap to improve digital literacy and e-commerce skills. 
There are over 100 online retail marketplaces and individual stores in the country according to a 2021 Dalberg report. Chief Administrative Secretary for ICT Maureen Baka says the government has developed various policies that are meant to support the ICT industry in the country. We have in place the national ICT policy that provides for more open and non-discriminatory trade barriers that may create a thriving market for ICT products and services. The policy promotes market access for ICTs open government procurement to competition and promotes cross-border e-commerce. Players in the e-commerce sector are urging the government to fast track the rollout of the national addressing policy and the draft national addressing bill 2021 which are meant to support the growth of the e-commerce business in the country. The national addressing system has been on the card for more than 10 years now but it's yet to be implemented. And horticultural growers will provide an exportation schedule for Kenya Airways in efforts to cater for smallholder producers who have been locked out of key markets globally. Kenya Airways is revising its policies and procedures to ensure seamless offloading management and reduce the current monopoly by big industry players. Fresh Produce Consortium CEO Okisegere Ojipat says delays are diminishing the quality of export produce, giving space for competitors to take advantage of this opportunity. Kenya earned 157 billion shillings from horticultural exports last year, up by 7 billion shillings compared to the previous year, making it the top agricultural export earner for the country. Agricultural produce exporters believe addressing challenges faced by smallholder exporters would help grow exports. In certain routes that the national carrier has a route, we can enter into a negotiation and absorb as, as small as possible those exporters including the beginners so what we're looking at here is how do we consolidate together how do we bring the small guys together and ensure that they take advantage of the capacity within the national carrier the major suppliers or the main the commodities come from uh, small scale farmers scattered uh, all over the country uh, this also applies to uh, french beans and snow peas it's actually 80 percent uh, driven by uh, small scale farmers so they are very important uh, uh, part of the value chain and very important stakeholders for that matter. They say smallholder agricultural exporters are subjected to high charges by some airline agents who prefer bigger players. They are now being urged to join associations in order to aggregate their produce to match airline economies of scale. And also when it comes to contractual farming, which allows them to have a better bargain uh, for prices, uh, quality, capacity building, and negotiate also for how um, the relationship that they intend to have with the exporters. How do we become predictable? How do we supply our cargo in a manner that can, be, can help the airlines and the logistics firm to be able to plan well and also for our market? Agricultural produce exporters are also seeking audience with the Horticultural Directorate to establish a predictable export schedule that caters to all horticulture exporters. We'll bring all the sellers together so that we can be able to discuss with Kenya Airways, especially uh, other airlines, on uh, matters of uh, increasing the capacity uh, out of Nairobi and also be able to offer the, the best rate in the market. Right now we are losing to our neighbors because they are able to offer good rates compared to us. Hibak Said for Easy Friday. Thank you, Hibak Said. Now, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics is revising its data collection and coalition methods to match international standards. The statistics agency says once the revision is done, it will help the agency adopt the latest international statistics management standards and integrate improved data sources and methods. KNBS has partnered with Statistics Sweden to help in updating its data management process. Since 2015, the Kenya National Bureau of Standards has been overhauling its ICT systems in a bid to update data collection and management processes. This has resulted in faster data collection and processing as well as accurate data reporting. The statistics agency says the ongoing system upgrade has helped in the development and revision of reports that are concurrent with the revised national accounts estimates. The Bureau is setting, uh, is setting up a center of excellence in statistics here in Kenya. 
and uh, I'm happy that in this, in this third phase, whose MOU we have just signed, is uh, planning to start us off by equipping the training room or the training center uh, within our uh, head office. KNBS has been working with the Sweden Statistics Agency in the three-phase project that will overhaul the agency's ICT system to conform with the international statistics management protocols. So we see more efficient tools used in statistical production, new ways of handling data in a more secure and efficient way, building on new data storage solutions. Uh, was actually to help us also uh, receive the laptops that uh, Strategy Sweden has uh, 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 donated to us. They were 146 uh, pieces, which uh, yeah, will go a long way in uh, supporting our statistical uh, uh, development. KNBS Director General MacDonald Obuodo says phase two of the project has seen 88 staff trained on new statistics collection and reporting procedures. More officers have also been trained in advanced survey methodology course. We are not just trained, but we also have our own officers who are actually uh, being trained to move the process forward. Since the upgrade started, the KNBS has undertaken the rebasing of the Kenyan economy in 2018 in compliance with SNA 2008, adopted the National Accounts Database System, and the development of a new statistical business register system. And families of the 32 Kenyans who lost their lives in the 2019 Ethiopian Airlines crash could get more compensation following the filing of another suit against the company's former CEO, Dennis Muyenberg, current CEO David Calhoun, and Mark Faulkner, the former chief technical pilot. The suit filed by a law firm representing 89 families of the victims of the two crashes has accused the top bosses of concealing the Boeing 737 MAX 8 problems that led to the crash of the Lion Air in Indonesia and Ethiopian Airlines in Ethiopia. A series of failures led to the crash of a Lion Air flight in October 2018, which killed 189 people. Five months later, an Ethiopian Airlines plane crashed, killing all 157 people on board, including 32 Kenyans, which led to the grounding of the entire Boeing 737 MAX fleet. The latest lawsuit has been filed by Manuel von Ribeck of Ribeck Law Chartered on behalf of Liu Chandra, a businessman who was a passenger on board the Lion Air's Boeing 737 MAX 8 that crashed in Indonesia. The complaint further blames David Calhoun, Boeing's newest CEO, for failing to prioritize safety issues even after the crash in Indonesia while serving as leader of Boeing's board of directors. They've lost someone a loved one and they want to punish those responsible so our job as opposed to the job of the official
of South Africa and Nidi Mingilishi of Zambia who bagged gold and silver respectively. <laughs> Joffrey Kira back bronze the men's 3,000 meter steeple chest clocking 8 minutes 29.74 seconds. Ethiopia's Tegelgen Emare and Bikila Takale took the first and second positions respectively. Thank you, Nora, for that report. Moving on, Kenyatta University were crowned champions of the men's soccer after beating Makerere University 2-1 in a nail-biting final of the 10th Africa University Games, which culminated today at Kenyatta University. The Games brought together 40 universities drawn from 16 countries. Kenyatta University football team qualified for the World University Games following the 2-1 win against Makerere University. The two teams had tied 1-1 in first half, but Kenyatta notched the winner in the second half to seal the title. Following the win, Kenyatta University qualified to represent Africa at the forthcoming World University Games scheduled for Chengdu, China in July. In basketball, Kenyatta University women's team finished fourth after beating Makerere University 49-45 in a fourth place playoff played at Kasarani Gymnasium. The hosts registered a narrow 15-14 points win in the first quarter, while Makerere fought back to tie the second quarter 9-9. Kenyatta University returned in the third quarter match improved side comfortably winning at 59. Despite Makerere staging a comeback winning the last quarter 13-10, it was too little too late as the host held on to bag the victory. The five the championship attracted over 40 universities drawn from 16 countries. Thank you, Okumu, for that report. The Kenya Lone Bowls team is all determined to play their hearts out when they take to the Greens in 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. The team of Sefas Kimwaki, Eugene Bugwa, Esther Wanjiru and Benson Karyuki has been in training at the Nairobi Club Bowling Greens as well as Karen and Limuru, but only two of them will represent the country in the Birmingham Games. Eunice Mbugwa, who boasts of several silverwares in the continental events, looks forward to her third appearance in the Games. Her best performance was 14th uh, placing in the singles during the 2018 Games in Gold Coast, while Sefas Kimwaki was placed 19th in the men's singles in his second appearance. Both are optimistic they will make it to the medal brackets this time round. The Cricket Lionesses today won their second match at the Kwibuka Women's T2 20 tournament after defeating Uganda by three wickets in a match played in Kigali, Rwanda. After winning the toss and electing to bat, Uganda scored 96 runs for the loss of 8 wickets in their allotted 20 overs. Leonida Babiria top scored for Uganda with 20 runs of 36 balls, while Naomi Bagenda and Rita Musamali had 19 and 18 runs respectively. Player of the match, Lavenda Idambo, took 3 wickets for the loss of 13 runs for Kenya. The Kenyan ranches looked to be in jeopardy after 5 wickets fell for just 14 runs inside 5 overs before Veronica Abuga and Esther Washira steadied the ship with a 56 run sixth a wicket stand. Abuka top scored for Kenya with 29 while Washira added 23. Kenya reached their target of 97 after a no ball in the penultimate delivery from Fiona Kulume. The Kuibuka T20 Women's Cricket Tournament is held annually in memory of the victims of the 1994 Rwanda genocide. Kenya, who are the defending champions, face hosts Rwanda tomorrow in their third match of the tournament. For Easy Friday, I am Daniel Wahome. Second win for And that's your spots. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. My name is Karen Kibet. Have yourself a peaceful night, but don't go too far as Shiksha Aurora will be back. And tonight she has an amazing guest on Spotlight tonight. You don't want to miss that. Good night.
All right, of course, now it's time for me to basically take you through this particular story, which um, I look forward to every single week right here on Easy Friday. And I believe by now we've already established that a slip of the tongue may not be taken kindly and far worse, the reaction on social media, it's never too kind, right? Count on Kenyans to make a mountain out of an anthill. And it has been that way this entire week. So on our weekly segment of Savage Netizens, we shift from climbing the mountains of the political arena all the way to swimming in the oceans of satire let's take a look I want to pose a very serious question well not that very serious but can a spirit possess one to say that which they do not mean hello Kenyans let's go for a two minute studies of the phrase unachoma this phrase means when someone starts spilling too much unnecessary truth Today at Kenya Kwanza Women Charter Muhubiri decided to choma proper. We want to come into agreement with the Kenya Kwisha with the Kenya Kwanza women. This was definitely bound to make content for savage netizens. Khalif tweeted, "Hey, Pastor Amechoma at Kenya Kwisha." <laughs> hey, Silas wrote Huko Nyayo Stadium at Mtuflani amesema Kenya Kwisha. Wa, oh Lord. Busia blogger tweeted, It's a spiritual matter. You cannot understand what you are talking about when the Holy Spirit takes over. Behold, Kenya Kwisha. But let's still dwell on the spiritual realm. According to the Bible, the Lord said to Moses, Make a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. Hey, some of you know how the story goes, but it looks like it's time for the snakes to come to our aid again. Presidential candidate Luchiri Wajakoya Manifesto does not only spell out weed legalization, but snake farming, extracting the venom for medication purposes, and wait for the best part. The meat will be given to the Chinese to eat and help offset our debts. <laughs> hey. Oh my God! Wow! And now Shanky might be regretting having asked, apart from the legalizing and planting weed, does Wajakoya have any other agenda? Emilian tweeted, Chai, too much wisdom and ability Wajakoya has. Brownie, mkua mebuta saidi ya moto. <laughs> Toti tweeted, washia yeye kwa bili yangu. <laughs> Jumping straight from the abyss of snakes to the pit of fire, drama unveiled at the IEBC headquarters after presidential aspirant Eliud Muthiora bid was thrown out. Ernest tweeted, Aongeze national ID huduma card bank ATM na Mpesa line. Makau, achome ID tumtambue. Karis decided to go full mode and tweeted, Ama ajiseti on fire. <laughs> we could know he was serious. You don't really joke with the Kenyans, huh? Well, as for me, I have absolutely nothing else to say. That's it for us this week. Catch you next Friday on Savage Netizens. For Easy Friday, I am Teresa Mutai. Welcome back to Easy Friday. This is Shiksha Aurora. Remember, you can interact with us on social media. The hashtag is Easy Friday on Twitter, at Shiksha Aurora, at KBC Channel 1. Now, tonight, my guest, somebody that I've been watching for, I think, over 12 years, love everything that he's been doing in terms of the industry. Um, I have to say, he's quite a talented young fellow. We'll be talking to him and asking him about his, you know, journey in the industry uh, as an actor. And, of course, won a couple of awards as well been in um, the biggest Kenyan productions so we'll talk to him Lenana hello hello <laughs> I'm sure the ladies are have been waiting for this <laughs> I mean I don't know <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel how, how, I feel good thank you, you good? so much for having me you look lovely yeah oh thank you yeah thank when's you. the last time you were actually on set for an interview uh uh for TV yes man it's it's been a while and it's funny we were actually talking about this before and yeah 
I haven't been to like KBC for like a long time. A long time. And so <laughs> when you called me and you yeah. told me to come, I was like, oh man, this I have to do. Uh, and it's it's just really good to be thank here. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Um, you know, we have a lot to talk about. I have All a lot right. of questions lined up for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know more about you. And of course, learning more about the Lenana Kariba. All right. Okay, let's Anything get to you it. Want to know, let's go. <laughs> but before that, Coljax on the other side. We've got him, you know, all set to make sure that the Friday fever is here to stay. Coljax, how are you doing today? Okay. So Coljax is on the other side, and yeah, we'll make sure that he's, you know, playing all the tunes that you want to listen to this Friday. Mix na soda, steam the koju, kaki wet na bua, my design sometime me who die me to ma. Tim niki drop niki nyambi, but on an angana niki nda pesana labi. Young look who daddy, my penzi ya dati pandezo de kacha pati nika ex kamandazi. Mini dum dum, haribu has sabati, mini dum dum, na sponsor easy party, mini dum. Na wakati shamaji, maka, na kachuna mali, na afford kamagari, chibisha wolenje. We out here doing what grown ups do. Let loose and bust some moves. Came one by one, leap two by two. Two by two. Two by two. Two by two. Yes, you 
Welcome back to Easy Friday. So in the hot seat tonight, we've got Lenana Kariba. So the spotlight's on him. He'll be telling us about his life, you know, in the acting industry in Kenya. Um, and of course, all the things that he's been up to, content creation. I know that you've been doing a lot of it off late in terms of working with brands as well. Yeah. Um, and just being a brand on your own. Yeah. Yeah. How's yeah. it been? How's, how's the experience since you got back? Uh, it's been great. I mean, I was... I mean, I just hit the ground running. I didn't know that was the plan. Okay. So, you know, um, I got married last yes, year. Yes, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You and your wife are just so beautiful. <laughs> we'll talk about wifey yeah, later all right, on. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what happened was with me now having gotten married and her living in the UK, I'm actually going to be moving there. Okay. But it's, uh, it's going to be a back and forth thing. I'm going to be here and there depending on, you know, work and stuff. Yeah, of course. So, I actually came back to get my spouse visa. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept me here. So, you literally just got... the producers and the mm -hmm. writers of uh, mm -hmm. the show. And uh, they called me and they said, hey, we know you're in the country, we've got this show, and I think there's a part you'd be perfect for, so yeah. why don't you come and audition and see if you like it? And I did. And, and here we are. Here we are, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was good fun. And then after that, of course, you know, I just talked to a few people, get okay. a few more jobs. And okay. Yeah. Love it. But now let's take you way back in time where, you know, you were in uni, you were a younger version <coughs> of yourself, mm. not too sure of where you ended, wanted to end up in life. Um, yep. Was acting something that you thought you'd be fit to do or something that just came along the way? Honestly, not at all. Really? I, I, acting found me. Okay. I always tell How people so? that because I... Um, I was in uni, yes, and I was actually studying uh, electronic media and mass communication. It's basically film and you know all all that. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to be in production in some way. So I always wanted to be behind the camera, mm. you know, never like in front in of it front or doing. Of the camera. Uh, and this one time, I had gone with a friend to an audition for a TV show, mm -hmm. and I was just escorting them. Mm. I wasn't actually supposed to be part mm. of this thing. I was just taking them. And when I got there, th there, was, there was a guy who was like handing out scripts and he mm. just came and handed the form to mm. me, you know, and the script. And he's like, take, 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 read. We'll call you when you're ready. And so I'm sitting there with this thing and I'm thinking, I'm not going to do this. And I just put it down, actually. Yeah. And she told me, why don't you just do it? It's like, what are you going to lose? Yeah. Right. And so I went into the room and I just read the lines and I was like, OK, cool. And I just walked out. And you got and the role. And that was it. I, I got the role. <laughs> yeah. <What>? So... <laughs> What happened was... Was that, your actual, was that your first audition? That was my first audition And you ever. got the role. Imagine, yeah. You know, I was just talking to him backstage, I mean, behind the scenes, and yeah. we were just having a conversation. Yeah. And I was like, I've actually auditioned as well for a couple of, of, of shows and, and movies. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy, the, the entire process that actors go through, it's so intense. It's intense. It's nerve-wracking, you know. I mean, at the time, because I thought, oh, man, this is nothing to me. I wasn't that nervous. But now, every time it happens, even today, I am. You know, still and nervous. Still nervous. Uh, wow. But I was lucky, you know. Everything that happened after that, I have progressed. And I think One that I'm doing well another. now for myself. Mm. But um, it's not always easy. I mean, between that first edition and the second show that I got, there was quite a gap. And I had done a hundred auditions before I got my next one. Wow. I mean, it's one of, of those things. I was just very lucky that this one was the one. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's tough because sometimes you could be a good actor. And I know a lot of great actors, obviously, out there. But you just don't look like the character on, this, mm. on the page, you know. So that's what happens. Mm. I just happened to walk into the room and they were like, that's what we want, Dr. Well, his name was Dr. Maxwell okay. Fuller. Okay. <laughs> and they, they looked at me, I did the lines, and the director was actually sitting there. At the time, I didn't know this, but I just read the lines and I walked out. Yeah. And he looked, he says, that's... That's, that's the look I want. want Maxwell to look do you like, think it's uh, something you know to do with being a good-looking man? Do you think you got you get lucky because of uh, your looks? Mm, I don't think so. Because okay. I, I have played roles where I'm not a very nice guy. Or a bad you man. Know, a villain. bad man, you know, and all <laughs> that. And I, I don't think it has anything to do with looks. I mean, maybe sometimes, mm. uh, but I don't think that's the whole reason no, of course why not. Right. yeah you know okay, interesting um Elenana, so in school what were you studying and do you know is it related to 
what you wanted to do here? Like, when you were in high school, what subjects did you I take? I mean, <laughs> high school, I mean, high school, you know, it's high school. You just, you do everything. do everything. But when I was in high school, I actually did a bit of, like, plays, and I was in skits and those kind of things they make you do. But at the time, I did it just for fun. For fun. You know, I never did it like, this is what I want to do yeah, when, it wasn't I, when serious. I get older. It wasn't serious. Okay. In fact, I remember we had to pick clubs yeah. in, when you were in high school. <laughs> yeah. You have to be in a club, yeah. you, you know. And I didn't like any of them. Mm -hmm. And so for the sake of just signing to a club so that I wouldn't get like in trouble, I signed up to drama club. Interesting. I thought if I, if I go to drama club and I sit at the back, yeah. I should be okay. <laughs> uh, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen. You're and the so, forefront. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was sitting at the back, yeah. but then, you know, one person was like, you come. Yeah. And then I did an audition for some play that they were, they were doing okay. for the end of the year. And, and then I also somehow find myself doing that. Uh, but then I got into uni. I was studying uh, electronic media and advertising, yes. as I told you. And I, at the time, I just thought, you know, I just want to learn about the production and stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to be a producer or a mm -hmm. filmmaker. Or, you know, uh, do you see? Do you DOP. see that happening anytime in future? Because I know a lot of actors eventually go on eventually, to become producers yeah. and directors. Mm. Um, is that something that you would like with your? career i think yes i think actually from from here now i think the next step for me would be to 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 kind of focus more on that and okay. see what i can do with it okay yeah. interesting maybe open a production house in the uk i mean oh well, maybe <laughs> you know it's tough you guys. the yeah. uk is tough man it you is. know like here it's nice because nairobi is so small mm -hmm. you know you do it for a couple of years small and then you know community. everyone you That's know so true yeah so, so true. it's so it's easy that way but you know in the uk it's huge you know it's okay so you could be the next, our next Lupita, the male version. Maybe, we could be lucky. <laughs> Lupita was lucky too, yeah, you know, so yeah. like, you know. luck sometimes. <laughs> you could yeah. be lucky, yeah. Okay, so, you know, I mentioned that we're going to talk about wifey. Uh, I really yeah. want to know how you guys met. Uh, I've just been reading a lot about you two, and it's just such a fairy tale. <laughs> so tell me. No, don't say that. You know what? You it's actually not as... I mean, maybe the whole thing that happened after with us being yeah. together and how we are, and everyone thinks, oh, you're so cute. And, and I, like the you fact know, that, you know, you've actually made a marriage work through kind of long distance. Yeah, well, right not, not by choice, of yeah, course. Of you course. know, it's, it's tough now because, you know, we got married in August. I, mm. I came back to Nairobi in October, mm. November, and I've been here since. And wow. it's not because I want to be here. Like yeah. I said, you know, my yeah. visa and all yeah. that. So I'm still waiting for that to, to process mm -hmm. and then I can go back. Mm. So not by choice, okay. uh, but we have made it um, this far and we are strong. It's amazing. You know, I try to be, you know, she's, she's, she's probably not as strong as I am. Sometimes yeah. it really gets to her. Um, but yeah, but you know, but we're doing okay. okay. We are, and Lovely. we're awesome. Uh, now the story of how we met. Yeah, where did you guys meet? I want to know. It's not a fairy tale at all because okay. it, was, it was one of those things where I had gone for a friend's uh, birthday party okay right it was a house party and she was there now i had known this person for a really long time the friend yes the okay. friend i had known them for a really long time and they knew helen my wife mm -hmm. is, is helen they knew helen for a long time too but we never met and we always make fun about that now like how is it that we've known this yeah. person but you just for this never long met. but we never met and mm -hmm. but we did that day actually the funny thing is i did meet her helen before like yeah. a year before that yeah but uh, it was just in passing. And I said, hi, oh, it's nice mm. to meet you. That was it. At the same house party. But this is now like a year later. Wow. Uh, but uh, it was, and I didn't actually remember meeting her the first time. But this yeah. time when we were introduced. And you know, she we remembered started, it. No, she didn't remember me okay. either. Okay. Yeah, we didn't remember each other okay, at all. <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, oh, Lenana, yeah. yeah, okay, nice to meet you. And then um, it was later on that our, our mutual friend told us that, you know, you guys have met before, right? That's crazy. And I was like, at the exact same house. Wow. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? It's like, yeah. So anyway, that night we talked for a bit more and yeah, I mean, like, we just hit it off. Okay, so after <laughs> the night ended, who messaged who first? Uh, I did actually, yeah, you know, yeah. I did, you know, that thing where you get someone's number because yeah. I did ask for her number. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, you know, you're told how uh, you should wait a couple of days before you, you don't want to yeah. seem too desperate. Yeah. I texted her the exact, as soon as I got home. Oh, hey, I'm home. Nice. Like, you lovely know, meeting you. It was so nice meeting you. <laughs> oh, I love I'd it. really like to see you again. Yeah. And she replied and she was like, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Oh, that's lovely. That's so nice. And the rest is history. And, and your <laughs> wedding was so beautiful. It was in the Caribbean islands and, you know, yeah, just it was so dreamy. Like, it looked like a movie. I won't lie to you. <laughs> yeah, did it? Yeah. It was, it was amazing. I think um, it had a lot to do with me getting my papers together and stuff. And okay. so we knew we had already talked about getting married. Okay. At this time, I had already proposed okay. uh, January of last year. And 
we knew we wanted to get married. We were going to wait until we came back to Kenya. Okay. But then, you know, lockdown happened and it was taking a really long time. Yeah. And so, you know, we actually talked with our parents and stuff and we said, listen, let me just get the papers together mm -hmm. so that I can finalize my moving there. Mm. And when we come back, when everything is settled down and everything is okay, we'll mm -hmm. come back and mm -hmm. we'll have the whole wedding now. Everyone mm. can be there. Aww. So we just did it, the two of us, actually. Wow. I think it was really special. It, it was kind of like our wedding and our honeymoon at the same, same time, time because we, right. you know, we, we got married and then we had yeah. the rest of the seven days yeah. to just enjoy the, the, the scenery and it's everything. Beautiful. It was amazing. I, I love I love how you did things in a very different way. It was a very unconventional way to get married, right? As yeah, people yeah, would say, because yeah. usually you expect there to be a big celebration, True. you know, with a lot True. of people present. Yeah, um, yeah, I know. So yeah, I mean, but the the, the hotel that we were staying at um, were very nice. You know, they did everything for us. Wow. We just had to show up. Okay. And uh, one of the ladies who was the manager, she yeah. was our witness and stuff. Yeah. So we did have someone there with yeah. us. You know, <laughs> yeah, but but it was nice. It was amazing. Yeah. And but we always knew we wanted it to be a destination wedding okay so even if we did it here we probably would have done it in the beach mm. still anyway but, okay but yeah Anana, I've, I've been following you on Instagram for a while and I love that you do these question and answer segments <laughs> you know yeah. with your yeah. followers and people who have been watching you your fans as well um, there's a lot of questions that, that people ask about like how your wife is so okay with you doing all <laughs> kinds of scenes um, and, and, and I love that she actually came on to say that, yeah, I mean, it's okay. I don't have an issue because that's acting. That's his work. Mm -hmm. And I also like that you went on to explain what really happens behind the scenes. And it's not as romantic it as, is as you see uh, definitely on, not. on, on mean, TV. Everyone, right? thinks, everyone thinks that there's, you know, they see what you see on TV looks amazing. But that's because the people behind the camera make it look amazing. Yeah. But if you were there while we're shooting it, it's not as romantic or cut, anything. Cut, cut, There's a lot of cuts again. and, you know, and you have to think when you're kind of having like an intimate scene with yeah. somebody else, there's like 12 people in the room. Yeah. And so, you know, it's not, it's not as, you know, as intense as you would think. We make it seem that way, of course, with the acting, actors. but, you know, as <laughs> yeah. soon as they say cut, you know, you just walk away and you're like, cool, you know, you just, you know, you just I end mean, up doing your own thing. Doing your own thing. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people uh, would say that it's normal for somebody else, to your partner, to yes. be okay with it, especially if they came into the game of the relationship knowing that you're you an are actor. an actor, these mm. are the kind of things you're mm. going to do and... And I think that's the one of the things that really drew me to her. You know, did she you speak really about it before getting married, or when you started dating? About my did work. You have that conversation. We talked about my work. We didn't talk about like, okay, so who are you gonna be on set yeah. with? You know, okay. like, what are you gonna be doing with Sarah Sand and Faith? You know, you know. <laughs> uh, we we didn't really talk about it to that depth, but she okay. knew, you know, what it what it was like. She's she's never dated an actor, but she knows obviously what acting is like. And if this came about, you know she's okay with it and i, I just it. said you know that's one of the things that really drew me to her she's yeah. very supportive and i love it a lot she's of the your time, biggest fan my number one fan Aww. and I, I know every and it sounds cliche and every guy yeah. is probably gonna say that about his girlfriend or his wife but she really is my number one fan she she, she watches she, all your movies she's all she's your watching shows. this right now oh man we have right to now, give yeah. her <laughs> a shout out <laughs> right so she's in the uk but she's watching it uh, that's online amazing. she's watching that's this amazing. right now i love so. technology i know right this yeah is, this is amazing yeah. we have it's to say amazing. hi to helen and we have to uh, tell her how incredible she is for being so supportive I know. um and we have right. to say thank you for being such a lovely wife and a she's human being the best yeah. you know uh, sometimes i give her my scripts to read until yeah. i'm like babe what do you think and like when I gave her the script for Single Kiasi, she said, oh, this is really nice. So who's going to be playing this Rebecca girl, the one that mm. you have a, you know, in, a relationship with? I said, I don't know yet, but I'll find out. And she's like, well, she better be pretty. Oh. Because I don't want you like, you know. Okay. And I'm like, wow, okay, okay. cool. I I'll, love it. I'll try and make sure she is. <laughs> Which she is. Yeah. Which she is. Faith is a, a, that's, a you know, that's, very that's pretty girl. That's amazing. Also. Yeah. Um, so, Lenana, we've spoken about, you know, your future plans. You said probably at some point you would like to be directing or you know in the production scene mm -hmm. um have you have you had that conversation with maybe different production houses as to what your vision is on who Lenana is in terms of an actor certain roles that you want to portray in future are you selective on the kind of scripts um, that you're picking right now uh yeah yeah i am i am selective very selective on the scripts i'm picking and okay. uh because at you know at the beginning of it i was really just trying to grow as an actor you're really trying to like be better at your skill and mm -hmm. you know figure mm -hmm. out what it is that you're good at so i would do a lot of odd things here and there but yeah. now i think i've gotten to the point where i can see a script and yeah. it doesn't matter how good it is i'm like 
uh, her character is just not for me or I don't like or maybe I just don't like the script and I'm like okay cool I don't want to I don't wow. want to go near that or so anything. So you've actually been, you're in a position right now where you've actually turned down roles. I have. I've turned wow. down a bunch of roles. I uh, you know, I actually, I, I, did, um, I did the final season of uh, Crime and Justice, yes. season two. By the way, that was an amazing Thank episode. you. Thank you. Uh, you and Sarah, like, you have some serious <laughs> chemistry. Have you guys we been can friends, talk about that. like, uh, before? Yeah, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time. Oh. We're very good friends. Kind of shows. Yeah, in fact... It's because we're friends and I know Sarah and we've actually done Plan scenes B like that well. and, and where we have to be intimate and interact like that together. It's very easy. It's yeah, very easy. Yeah. Um, if I had to do that with someone I didn't know, mm -hmm. there would be that time that you have to get to know this person first and then build that kind of uh, comfortable rapport between the two of you. But right. if you know someone like I did with Sarah or I did with uh, Faith Kibathi for Single Kiasi, I knew her already. It was easy. We, okay, uh, you know, we're okay. friends already and it's like, okay. you know, yeah, we're just working. And so yeah. the chemistry is really, okay. yeah, that made it easy for me. Yeah. yeah. Any, any particular role that you would love to do? So, that's something that you haven't tried, you know, experiment? Um, no, I don't have a particular role that I would, I mean, I, I think anything that's outside my comfort zone is probably something I would really like to do because mm -hmm. I think that makes me grow as an actor. I think okay. that's going to make me better. Okay. And, um, because I have tend to stick a lot to my comfort zone and stuff. I have stepped out a bit by being the bad guy, you yeah. know. Before I was always the, the you know, the boy next door. The boy next door Chocolate who, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I got tired of that very yeah. quickly and I was like, I don't really want to be seen like that all the time, yeah. you know. Sometimes I just want to be the bad guy who everybody hates, mm. which, you know, I don't mind. You know, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun being the bad guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So you've been doing this for like 12 years or so, right? <sighs> 12 years. And um, we just had a conversation before we began, and you mentioned that sometimes, you know, you actually end up being given a script, and you have no time to get to know the character, and mm -hmm. you just have to go and start filming and start shooting and how does yeah. that work in terms of preparation what does that do to you well the thing with that is a lot of times and this actually happened with uh, crime and justice okay because I remember i told you i turned down roles yes crime and justice had actually called me several times for different characters on since season one really and they called me for different episodes but i was like no i don't like that one i don't yeah. like that one i yeah. don't want that one and then i was handed the script for the finale of season two and i was like oh my god i love this oh, episode yeah. I loved the episode more than I loved the character, and mm. I think that's what made me do it even more. Um, and I think I got the script maybe two days before we had to shoot. Wow, two days! I had a little like snippet thing when I auditioned. They yeah. only give you a few lines, yeah. but I got the script like two days before we started shooting. And when I read through it, sometimes it's easy, especially if, it's, if you don't have to go too far outside yourself to mm -hmm. just be this person. It makes it easier. A lot of the times, I sit down with the director, and he, you know, like... I, we have a call, we like, we'll have a, a video call and I'll tell him, this is what I think and we very quickly try to discuss the character and in those two days I tell him this is what I want to bring out of it and this is how I'm going to do it. Okay. And if they're okay with it, then we go along. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So a lot of the times it's just doing what you feel like yeah. this character would yeah. be and if the director is okay with it, then you just you roll with it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I want to play a little game with you, a rapid fire. And I'm going to okay. ask you a few right. questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have to just be really quick and like, just be honest. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing intense. This is crazy. All right. All right. <laughs> let's, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So let's start off with beach <coughs> or safari? Beach. Okay. Tall or short? Tall. Tall. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask. So the, who's your favorite actor? Oh, man. Should I be quick about this? Yeah. That's a hard one, though. Okay. I mean, Talk I can't. Three. three. Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. uh, Winona Ryder, mm -hmm. I love her, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. Robert De Niro, okay. I guess. I mean, it's so many. That's this off the top of my head, okay. but yeah. A role in a Hollywood movie that you think you would have played better than the actor? <laughs> that's, that's, wow. Um, anything that Vin Diesel has done, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. <laughs> okay, okay, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Yeah. Being fast and furious, aren't you? Anything that you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, if, if a book was to be named after you, okay, like an autobiography, what would the name of the book be? <laughs> uh, one word. One word? Mm. One word of the mm. book. No, like the title. The title? Yes. One word. In one word. Um, God. I, <laughs> I don't know. My life isn't very interesting, guys. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
it would be exciting. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm just saying yeah. that because I think for me it is. But an I, adventure. Yeah, an adventure. Something like that. Mm. I probably adventurous then yeah I probably say that yeah, yeah okay okay that's a tough one a though, Hollywood yeah. a a Hollywood of... actress that or Hollywood or even Kenyan actress that mm. you, you you'd love to work with um well I've I've really worked with a lot of people that okay. I've told myself man I would really love to yeah. work with her okay in Hollywood then uh, oh in Hollywood yeah um I would love to I mean I would love to work with Denzel mm -hmm. Washington for sure uh I think maybe Idris Elba Idris Elba. a good Elba. one. I think nice. I'd love to work with Idris Elba. I like that choice. Uh, oh, Idris. Uh, Damson Idris. Yeah. I don't know if a lot of people would know Damson Idris. No. He's, he's a UK actor. Um, Snowfall, stuff okay. like that. I mean, if okay. you go check him out, you'll see. Okay. Yeah, he's probably someone I'd really love right. to work with. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the last one. In your eyes, who is the best Kenyan actor and who is the best Kenyan actress? <laughs> and you can't say your own name. Oh man, yeah. that's that's cheating now. You can't. Or if I say it, it is cheating. No. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, who is the best Kenyan actor? Mm. <laughs> I can't say one. Okay. It's two. not gonna be any. If I if two. I say one, guys will be like, oh, you two. Know. Say two. Um. Being nice. <laughs> being nice. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's see, Kenyan actors. Uh Pascal Tokodi is actually a really good actor. Okay. You know. Okay. Him and I have known each other for a while okay. also. But so basically uh, Pascal and yourself, right? Pascal and myself, of course, okay. yeah. <laughs> female? Uh, female, uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to, because everyone would think I would probably say like Sarah San, who's an amazing actress, yeah. of course. I yeah. think she's one of the greatest. Um, but there's some like, you know, like the, the underdogs who people might not know about. Mm -hmm. Like when we did uh, Single Kiasi, you know, the like Faith Kibathi is mm -hmm. an amazing actress. Okay. Love working with mm -hmm. her. Nice Kidenji. Mm, nice is uh, great. Nice, nice, nice is, is great. amazing. Nice is nice. I have, <laughs> I have loved nice since like changing times, man. Wow. And, and that's actually one of the first times okay. that we met. Okay. And she's amazing. I okay. love her acting. Okay. She's really last good. one. I said I was the last one, but I have one more. All right. You're just going to keep doing this yeah, yeah, until we're done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> A Kenyan right. director that you'd love to work with? Um, Kenyan director I'd love to work with. I, I don't have one. I, 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 do, I do like socializing. I do know how to go out and meet new people and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and adventure. I mm -hmm. do love that. Mm -hmm. But I am a loner. I do love being alone okay. by myself. Okay, you enjoy your alone time. I enjoy my alone time very mm -hmm. much, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, nice. <laughs> yeah. so Lenana, you know, um, your parents, you know, people who have pushed you, was, it, was there ever an issue when you told your parents or your family that you wanted to be an actor and <laughs> this is what you wanted to pursue? Um, no, not so much. Uh, you know, with with my family, my 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 siblings, kind of paved the way in terms of going into that kind of entertainment yes, industry. Yes, yes. I know your brother's in the same industry as well, right? Yeah, yeah. My my eldest actually, uh, Bam Ziggy, mm -hmm. right, is my older brother. And when he started that whole thing, I think maybe my I I didn't really know how my parents felt about mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then my, now the brother before me, uh, Cora, mm -hmm. who was part of the council yeah. and uh, is a, an amazing producer now as well. He also, you know, paved that way. And, you know, my, my dad and my, and my mom, uh, you know, my dad especially, he was very comfortable with letting us be what we wanted to be. I love that. So it's like, if that. you feel like you're happy doing this, then... I'm all for it and I support you. That's and beautiful. That, yeah, That's lovely so. to hear. Um, Lenana, as we wrap up, any you know, advice that you have for the youngsters and, of course, actors who are really trying to break through in this industry? It, as you said, there's a lot of actors out here who are so talented, but they don't get the chance. Um, what would you like yeah. to tell such people? I think it is, it is tough, and I'm not going to lie. It is. And the story that I told you before about how I got my audition... I was lucky, but mm -hmm. like I said, after that, you know, before I got my next job, it took some time. And 
when I realized that, oh my God, this is something I really enjoy doing. Yeah. This is something I love. I want to keep doing this. I just kept pushing and I never gave up. I never give up because the thing is, when you know what you want from yourself and you want to, you know, pursue this and you have a passion for it, nothing's really going to stop you, mm. you know. So like, even if you feel like maybe it's not working out right now, it will work out at yeah, some point, absolutely. you know. And, there's a, and especially now in this day and age, there's a lot of opportunities coming up with all these platforms coming into Nike, yeah, you know, into streaming. Kenya, you know, so the streaming platforms exactly. and stuff. A lot of opportunity to, to actually put your foot into the industry and do something. So just, just never give up. I love that. Any it's message for your easy. fans? For Lenana lovers, Lenana fans out here? Oh <laughs> man, my fans, my supporters. Uh, I mean, just that I love you guys so much. Uh, you guys are amazing. I love the support. I mean, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be sitting here yeah. with the amazing Shiksha right now or be where I am in my career yeah. right now. So yeah. just thank you so much. Thank Love you, it. thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right, so thank you so much, Lenana. That was an absolute pleasure. Oh, I, um, loved, I it. loved every bit of the conversation. You know, so many little things that I've learned from you tonight. <laughs> and and yeah, just thank you, thank you for being so inspiring. Um, and I feel like you're so grounded and humble. And it's very hard to come across these days. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Maybe Helen has something to do with that, or maybe your family, your upbringing. Uh, my 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 family has a lot to do yeah, with that. Yeah, you know, so it's amazing. Those so I mean, go honestly. To your head. Keep doing you, yeah. keep being you, and keep shining. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I really yeah. love this. I yeah. love being here. Yeah. Like I said, it was so great to come, thank you. you know, thank here you. and do this. Thank you so. for coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, and that's how we wrap up this edition of Spotlight. Of course, we've got Lenana Kariba with us. I'm going to make sure we do a dance together later on. So watch out our social media. <laughs> We're going to post that later on as well. Yeah. Um, he's a fantastic dancer from what I hear. <laughs> You'll see for yourself. But yes, thank you. Thank you once again for sticking right here on Easy Friday. We'll do this again next week. Same time, same place. Shiksha Aurora signing out. Cole Jax, it's time for you to take it away. Kwe maskini lakini 